Hey guys, welcome back, I'm Beast here. Today we're looking at SnowRunner again, and today we're going to have a quick uh, look at how you can edit some XML files in your favorite mod vehicle to give them what I call comfort tweaks. In other words, they're just tweaks that are going to make the vehicle, for your personal use, more comfortable how you want to experience it in the game. So let's take a look at this vehicle. This is one of the mini vehicles from the um, Scout Max pack console mod that you'll find in the community mods and it's a super awesome mod had a lot of downloads very reliable builds and in particular I like this vehicle here which is a an international lodestar it's their uh, DUF version and uh, they have two two or three versions of this vehicle one is dual wheel twin rear axles and one is a single rear axle uh, with dual wheels so and then various um, types of suspension that are active so they lift up and down like this is in its high position at the moment so let's have a look so we can change down to low to high um, this particular vehicle has got a lot of mods that I call comfort mods or comfort tweaks that I've made myself the wheel diameter is bigger the wheelbase is narrower um, the damping the axle travel and bits and pieces are all custom how I want it. This is the engine, the intake, um, the weight distribution, the overall weight of the vehicle. This is a 10 ton vehicle even though it's in the Scout class of vehicles in the game which means that now it's capable of pulling semi trailers and then I have a center of gravity changed as well so that it won't pull wheelies trying to take the weight of a semi trailer. Um, 8 speed transmission and a few other bits and pieces which I'll show you in just a minute. This particular mod, as it was made by the authors, doesn't have a second suspension axle set up for their uh, dual rear axle vehicle. So I've just left it the same way myself. I'm not too worried about all of that. Most of the time this would be towing a trailer, so you don't see it anyway. And like I say, that the physics of the game still work out and acknowledge the other axle and suspension even though it's not there. Which is why we're able to edit quite a bit of the vehicle, the way it handles and the way you'll use it uh, just by editing the XML files. So let's take this for a quick drive and see what I'm rambling on about and then we'll go and have a quick look in the garage at the other versions. So here it is, so you can see it's got a, a ton of power, good torque and it can get around and so we're, we're not even in low gear so we're churning through the mud, we're not even in low gear, we're just in our normal first gear So we're getting through here okay. Obviously the grip is, is, has a lot to do with how you're going to get on in deep water. So against um, heavy currents in deep water, you're going to struggle. But um, then again, we're getting through some places already in this girl that I think if you've played Snow Runner or Mud Runner a little while, you'll know that normally vehicles aren't getting along through the terrain like this. And we're getting quite deep now and I think we're going to drown and I can feel us losing traction then again like I say we are not even in low gear so look at this as long as our snorkel and exhaust are out we'd be like taking a gulp full of water and drowning and the truck would have a hard time but in this particular comfort mod we are fine so the travel is pretty good uh, we should have tipped over there we almost did I don't know how quick we'll get or how much luck we'll have getting up this bank um, I have added twin rear steering is where you can see it's progressive rear rear wheel rear axle steering I think what we'll do is put that into low gear low plus let's try that So you can see what I mean by that axle travel. And I think we can probably get back to auto now. We should be able to reverse out of there. Yeah, we can reverse out of there. There we 
Okay, so the steering's a little bit slow. Probably needs to be a bit more responsive. Don't think we're going to get up these rocks, though. It's not really a rock crawler. Whoa, okay. So she launches. Sorry, lost track there. I was just enjoying the vehicle. But so you can definitely see that these comfort mods they have a place if you just want to enjoy the 3D environment or just um, do a bit of exploring around the map without taking hours to do so and get around and get to these places which would usually be a little obscure and hard to reach. Uh, obviously, not that hard anymore. Just like that, we're across the lake. A few dents, though. Alright, so let's recover this back to the garage. And have a look at everything. Alright, so there's my beast. My version of the Lodestar 1700 Max. Which I think was the... Possibly the 6x6 version. We go into the store and have a look at the other vehicles that came in this mod. Obviously this van. That beast. Another beast there. And I've modded this to take some bigger wheels. And so again, this is the dual twin rear axle version, non-steer. Um, I made that steerable. And then your... Um, single rear wheel configuration still scouts very much of a beast but still scouts and so even though they come with a lot of accessories which is really cool for these vehicles um by the time you start to try and pull an engine uh sorry pull a semi you know you were doing wheelies basically as we could do um and there's some pretty cool things extra weight here ballasts so that when you're pulling semis you know you can get by all right But again, what we want to do is we want to see how do we go from these awesome vehicles to my version here. And you can see it's changed in every way, handling-wise. So let's go to the game and let's have a look how we arrive at that. Okay, so first of all, you need to go to your mod uh, folder, and you'll find your mod folder in Documents, My Games, and SnowRunner Base. Go into Mods, and these are all of your community mods that you'll find on the uh, mod site when you first launch the game. Okay, so we need to locate the file that has the name of your mod. Let's quickly go through. We'll start to recognize the names of vehicles in the mods. As you can see, I have a few because I've been experimenting with a few different vehicles trying to find the right one. And obviously it was in the Scouts pack, which is an awesome pack. So. Scouts Max pack console. First thing you do is you take this PAK file, copy it over, and paste it into a backup area before you start working on it. So that if something goes wrong with your mod, you have the original. So here's our original there. Next thing we need to do is just extract it, unzip it. So now that we have the unzipped file, we can look inside. Uh, the unzipped folder, we can look at all the files and folders within it. Go to classes, and these are all of the different mods for the vehicle. Go to trucks, 
and you'll see what I've done here is I've taken the base file of the vehicle I wanted to make my inversion of, copied and pasted that file, renamed the file a name that I wanted to call it, maintained the rest of the vehicle's name from the original author because, you know, it's, it's a nod back to the author of this mod, which is obviously they've put a lot of work in. When we open this file, now we can start to edit the different aspects to make this vehicle how we want it. And I'm just going to explain quickly rather than uh, doing it, because obviously I've already done this now. So let's start right at the top. First thing I wanted to do was make sure that these axles could steer. So in the front wheel characteristics, we take the steering details, those details there, and we pasted it into these two axles. The details are pasted in there. Okay, so for rear wheel one and rear wheel two, now they have a steering characteristic. Then from there, we decided what kind of steering angle range we want to give it. So the original was 38. So obviously we don't want the rest to steer as much, otherwise the vehicle will just turn on a dime when you're trying to go down the road and turn around a corner, you'll just you'll spin. So I have the second axle at minus 10. Make sure to make that a negative number, otherwise your wheels will turn the same way as your front wheels. We want them turning the opposite direction, obviously. So we've got a minus 10 for the second axle, minus 14 for the third axle, or the far rear axle. But I think it's not enough. I really feel like that needs to be at least 18 and this needs to be 14 and that will give a better effect. You could see that it wasn't as nimble as it probably needs to be at, at, at high speed it would be nimble enough but definitely at low speed you know it wasn't enough to get us around those corners we need to get around easily so that's really going to help it so we'll save that up and we'll move on. The next thing we want to look at is the speed of the steering when you're driving. So we noticed that that was too slow. So we've got a 0 0.04 here and a 0 0.008 here. And I have a feeling if we make that a 0 0.04, it's going to swerve all over the place. It's going to turn too fast, but we'll try it anyway. Our fuel capacity is 1,000. We've edited that. Engine start delay is just when you... When you hit the button to start it, how long does it take before it starts running? Does it have a cough and a splutter and all this kind of thing, or does it just punch straight away? So obviously we've got a punching straight away. Very fast start time. And the exhaust delay is probably a bit long, so I'm going to make that 0.6, because obviously smoke's not coming out straight away when you start it, but it's going to be pretty quick after. Let's make it a 0.6. Responsiveness, 0.6, that's faster than standard. Coming down and looking at our tire details here, this is where I change the wheelbase. Okay. And this number in the string at the end here, the 0 0.09, that is the offset from the center of the chassis. And then obviously it's got some kind of mirroring in the way the program looks at this model. And it's mirrored for the right side, which says true. And it's got the exact same position coordinates, which wouldn't be right. So I'm not sure how that works, but it works. So we've got a 0.9. And what I did then was I was able to bring in the wheelbase, close it up, make it a little bit narrower so we can get between rocks and things when we put the bigger wheels on. And it will still have a narrower overall wheelbase than the factory mod you saw in the garage. I tweaked the distances that these wheels are apart, which is your first, first number in the string. Obviously, with uh, my larger scale version of the wheels, there needed to be room for it to fit. And so I've just punched the third axle back further. Okay. And that's just a very much a trial and error. Change it by maybe point two at a time, go into the game and have a look and see if it has the right effect. Then we had a look at the suspension. What type of suspension it is. We can go back into our folder and we can find that suspension. Back in classes, suspensions, and that's a suspension file there. Open that file 
and here we have it here now we can go in and change the damage capacities and anything else you want depending on how you want to play the game uh, for me i change the height of the rear suspension so we've got the heights there so you can see this is front suspension wheel type front rear suspension so you can see that i have a slightly higher rear suspension to compensate for when we put weight on obviously also what we've got when you have a look at the strength of the suspension i've got a stronger suspension at the front for handling and then there are two axles at rear and so the suspension is a little softer at the rear and then you've got your axle travel minimum axle up and down max is how far up and minimum is how far down that wheel will travel keeping in mind it is relative to the strength of the suspension if the suspension is really strong the wheel still won't travel far because it's such a stiff suspension unless you have weight on it so we saw at speed the truck was handling how we pretty much wanted it to handle then i came down here and gave that suspension modification my own name or my nickname so that in the game menu i know what it is again the price we can dictate the price the authors of this original might have made the price one dollar which is very helpful and the unlock rank was i think one i have changed a few of these you can go through and change these as you can see if we go down through this file are all the different types of suspension you'd find in the menu when you're doing your customizations in the garage for the vehicle low rider active rear six by six active soft and so on so make sure we've saved that we can close that wanted to have a look at the actual mud tires themselves we've added a few values in there to change the frictions on the different terrain the next thing we wanted to do is look at the snorkel you'll notice that we were able to go deep into the water and not drown although we got to a point where the engine damage message was coming up and that was when our snorkel dipped under the water and we can change those values here so we can have a look at whether the snorkel is placed on the track and change the values here back in our tracks actual file we start to go down down our list and start to find now the other details that we can also edit damage capacity of fuel tank for instance tweaked okay and your, your driver positions steering wheel positions this is of your camera if you're in the vehicle a whole lot of other things here the different types of wheels that will show up in the menu customization options for this vehicle again they're all here we saw the other uh, other files and here they're all named there is a scale here and this is where i've added my version of the wheels so again i took the string pasted it and changed the scale so you can see the original here and you can see my version here with a 74 72 and slightly larger and then the same with the medium tires we've taken the medium tires and the heavy tires and we've changed some of the sizes to suit what we want to do the next thing we've done is we've changed the snorkels active uh, region so coming back up here we've also changed the damage position of the box the damage area the collision area for the engine and the fuel tank so you'll notice when we were bumping around uh, the suspension and tires were registering damage and the engine and fuel tanks weren't and that's why so we've done all of that we've changed the mass the center of mass we've given it five ton very low and near the front of the truck again so that when we accelerate with the semi-trailer uh, we're not going to pull wheelies if you leave this country detail blank the truck's then available in all of the different maps that's the price you can edit and we're pretty much at the end of all you'd need to do your camera positions for different views they can all be edited
Um, I think I did go through here and find the snorkel possibly and change its position a little bit as well. Scroll down. So that's all done. So basically when you've played with your customizations and you save the file, then all we need to do is go back into our expanded folder with all of the different tweaks that we have changed come back in and zip it up make sure it's a pak file make sure we're at compression level which is normal no compression and then we have our modded version of the file swap it back over into our actual mod folder let's replace it start the game and now we'll see that we've changed a few things there we changed the steering angles and the steering speed so we'll be able to test that in just a moment So this, you can do this on any of your mod vehicles, and if you're not too familiar, it's just always a case of backing up your file before you start to modify it, so that if you have a problem, you can just swap the original file back in. Of course, with the community mods, it's not so bad, because you can always unsubscribe and resubscribe, and you'll automatically have it again. So again, just if you weren't sure, there's the mod Scouts Max Pack console. You can see it's on. So if you do mess up your editing of the files, you can always unsubscribe, resubscribe, and it should download the updated version. So we should find a more responsive steering now and a slightly tighter steering angle on the rear give it a shot okay here's the girl so let's have a look at that steering angle there we go you can see it's a lot better a lot better rear steering angle that's going to change the way it handles in a straight line you've got to think that if you're going fast and then you make the slightest turn um, all six wheels have got input and it's going to make the vehicle drift very quickly across the road and you can see the other thing that we changed it was our steering speed and now it's a lot faster that's also going to cause us a few problems when we start going fast but for right now it'll be fine so let's go you can hear how that was a fast startup basically the truck was ready to roll before um, the smoke even came out of the exhaust and you can see now we have very responsive steering. It's turned into a bit of a drift machine. But again, the responsiveness of the vehicle means that we can sort of drift that out and use it to throw the vehicle around quite well. So that's a lot better now. So now it's pretty quick pretty stable but that steering it is going to see move the vehicle around very quickly on the road though something to be careful of and to get used to you can see again that damping is really awesome for when you sort of you're not bouncing around too much more we can chew here guys more than we can chew let's just carefully steer our way down steer our way down well that's fast put your foot down oh i think we're going to drown here we're in the deep end of it 
but we're actually not. Look at that. Beautiful. So they go just like that. You, know, you can add a new element of fun to the game. When you're sick of um, doing the sim go very, very slow, we can even try and just get across this lake. So let's we'll just stop a minute in the water because we can and have a look where we actually are so we're there we're not going to go this way and find that trip we're literally cutting straight across uh, this water area if we make it who thinks we'll make it I'm willing to bet we make it because don't forget we're still driving in our normal forward gears off of the road if needed we have a choice of three low gears But it would seem we don't need it. Again, that maneuverability is really coming handy now. I bet we get through these trees okay. A couple of low branches, which are nice. But look how we can just sort of snake around. Getting under there though. This way. Wow, okay. I think we're going to drown here. This looks very deep, and yeah, we're right in the middle. So I think we're going to drown here, guys. But hey, it's been fun. Yep, we have got full damage, and we went under the water, <laughs> uh, and we have no um, anchor points to get back out either. All right, so if we wanted to, we could go back into that XML file and edit the snorkel and the exhaust values so that they were higher than physically they are in the water. We could do that just by changing those values. And then the vehicle would, wouldn't register being so deep under the water. And we could actually get right across this deep part of the lake. Which when we have a look. It's crazy we're actually in deep parts of the lake. There's no, no drivable areas. So there you go guys. Just like that we have been able to. Change a few aspects of the truck to make it more drivable. Have a bit more fun. You could do this with the tanks. The small trucks. The big trucks. Edit it to fit the bigger wheels as you saw. When we go back into customizations here and go to tires, I actually edited it to fit the big caterpillar tires, so the mining truck tires, so huge, huge. and actually let's put those on for a moment and let's go out there and have a look how it looks, it won't look very good because we haven't edited the, um, the distance of those axles apart, we'd need to bring the rear axle further back and yes, it will drive, but it will drive weird. Now, technically, if we wanted to drive the vehicle in this configuration, we could, because um, don't forget that the original author of this mod has got suspension that can be raised, so there we go. It takes care of most of the travel issues. There'd be a few collisions, obviously, in real, because of the steering, but um, it could work. Actually that, yeah, so there'd be collisions in the steering. So if we move that rear axle back, probably about 0.5, maybe 0.5 would give us normal clearance. And so now we can put these big uh, wheels on here and let's see how it actually handles. It probably handles better with these wheels. It would suit the gearing on my 8-speed. Now you can see with so much grip and power, why isn't it tipping? That'll be, that'll have a look to do with the um, the center of gravity that we changed. Drift machine. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Back up. Oh, that was close. That was close. You can tell I haven't done a lot of drifting in a while. It's been years, actually. Last bit of um, open road drifting I did, I just about drifted into a cliff. 
actually off a cliff. So, there we go, that's more like it. That was in my V8 at the time. It was all fun until, um, yeah, until I was drifting for dear life. <laughs> yeah, it was like the movies, back where I was off the edge. It was like holding off for dear life and, and that, hitting that gas to, just enough to make sure that I didn't lose it. And at the end of that, I decided yeah, it's probably enough of um, public road drifting for now. This handles well though. Anyway guys, I'm going to leave that video here because as you can tell I could just keep... I mean, for me part of doing the mods is just to play with the vehicles, it's not so much to um, go in the game and try and do challenges twice as fast and all that kind of thing. You can see by my account there's not a whole lot of uh, progress happening. You know, I just do like playing with the vehicle mechanics and physics and seeing if we can drift a big huge <laughs> vehicle without tipping over and get that balance right. <laughs> pow 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 pow. Oh, didn't bring it out in time. Ouch. So, anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, we'll just leave this game quickly and I'll show you what I was talking about with um, going back into our vehicle file here. And so, if we were going to have those wheels on. That was going to be your favorite wheel to have on the vehicle most of the time what you'd probably do is you go back into your folder for your vehicle types and where i've made this iron beast version of the vehicle i'd probably copy that and call it iron beast 72 inch or something like that which is the size of those wheels so that way you don't have to go back in and keep editing this file uh, to suit the wheels because obviously if we go through here, and this would have to be probably minus three point. Just looking at how that's position, probably minus three point eight would give the seventy-two inch big wheels that are on there at the moment the right clearance between the two axles. So we change it here and here, but then of course, let's say we want to go back to the other tires, which are these tires that were on there when I first showed you. And then they're going to be too far apart now okay so that's why if you're staying to do mods that are specifically a way you like to drive a vehicle 30 or 40 percent of the time and then you like to drive it another way the other percentage of the time and the changes are so drastic you can't have a general setting that works for both sides sizes of the tires or wheels and then it is easier to go and make a second version of your vehicle um, already built the way that you like to have it put it into the file, so rename it so it shows up in the menus, and then you're good to go. Alright, so that's it in a nutshell guys, editing the XML files to change some characteristics of the vehicle, um, how it handles, how much it costs, coming down to the game data, and making sure that you've got your country set right, prices right, the unlock rank, all these kind of things. Exactly how you want it to enjoy the game at the optimum for yourself. Yeah. And again, obviously if you're editing someone else's mod as I've done here, you know, you, you generally can't go out there and you know palm it off as your own mod because it doesn't it's your your personal editor of someone else's mod and it's not the distribution or redistribution elsewhere. And that way you're not gonna just um rub anyone up the wrong way, get on the wrong side of modders and people that have put a lot of hard work into make these mods uh, for free for us all, you know, which is amazing. But if you do want to make a comfort edit to your mods, now you know how to. You could go into any of your mods back here in your mod folder, any of the mods that you pull off the community, the Mandalorian track of you to have fun with that one, you know, and you could do the same thing. Copy the original file as a backup, put it into a folder with originals. I've just called mine original packs. It's um, Snow Runner original packs. And then extract it and bring it out into your working space. Then you can go into the folder 
locate the files that you want and edit those files, zip it back up, swap it over and you're good to go. So stay tuned guys as I do more of these uh, basic introduction ideas to modding and also test driving different vehicles either that I've made by amazing modders out there or showcasing some personal tweaks that I've made to some of those mods myself or in some cases um, standalone mods that I've made for games such as ETS, ATS, um, Mudrunner, SnowRunner and Microsoft Flight Simulator and X-Plane as well. Okay guys, so uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, stick around for my next one. We'll catch you real soon. Bye for now.